many print designers and a lot of them really like to work with their hand-drawn artwork but of course they have to find a way to get that hand-drawn artwork into the computer to work with it so there are a lot of print designers who work in photoshop and depending on the type of textile print design that you're creating photoshop is probably the best option for you but if you can work with your artwork in Illustrator, you'll be able to take advantage of a few things, one of which is called Image Trace, which changes your artwork into vector art so that you can then easily work with it within Illustrator and you can recolor it very easily and then you can also put it into repeat very easily using the pattern tool. So let's talk about Image Trace and what it can do. Let me start by saying that this works the best with very clean artwork. So make sure you're either working with a clean scan or high resolution artwork, at least 150 DPI works great. If you take a picture and the resolution is set to 72 DPI, but the object is really large, that may still work okay as long as you don't plan to enlarge the picture. But if you can, update the resolution on your camera. Open your picture in Illustrator and select it with one of the selection tools. Then go to the window menu and open the image trace panel. You can bypass the icons across the top and the preset options. You can also bypass the view. Tracing result is the default and you'll want to leave it on this. But the first thing you might change is the mode, depending on how you decide to trace your artwork. If it's a pencil or ink sketch on white paper, you'll probably want to trace as black and white. If the art has color already, which I'd recommend you do this with digital art for best results, you may decide to trace it in color. For this floral motif, I'm going to choose black and white. The threshold controls the balance of black and white in the artwork. Moving the slider closer to zero brings out more white in the artwork, while moving it towards 100 brings out more black. So play with it to find a nice balance that looks good to you for your artwork. Moving into the advanced section, Open this area and use the options here to refine your tracing even more. And as you update these options, keep your eye on the number of paths and anchors at the bottom of the image trace panel. The goal is to get the best rendering with the least amount of points and anchors. With paths, this option refers to the path fitting and will give you a tighter fit and more precise tracing. A higher percentage will give you a more accurate tracing, but again, make sure you keep your eye on your artwork. You don't necessarily need the slider to go all the way to 100, which also increases your number of paths, to get an accurate tracing. With corners, a higher percentage means more corners will be added to the artwork. I always think that this number should be lower with art like this that's smoother and rounder, but be careful because as you give a lower percentage, you tend to increase the number of anchor points, and it doesn't always make a difference in how the art looks. So again, see what looks the best while keeping your number of anchors low. The last option here is noise, and this option usually helps to do any last bit of cleanup on your art. If there are any stray pen or pencil strokes, dirty areas of your paper or paper texture that may have been picked up by the scanner, things like that. This will help get rid of all of that. Similarly, if you have small details that you wanna bring out more, this option will help with that. Bring the slider towards zero to remove more noise and towards 100 to bring out more of the small details. At the bottom of the panel are a few more options you'll need to set before you do your final tracing. There are two methods to choose from, a budding or overlapping. A budding is the default, and for this, I would suggest keeping it that way. I would also suggest you keep fills checked in the create section and leave strokes unchecked. Snap curves to lines will replace slightly curved lines with straight lines. You can decide if you want that for your artwork or not. And choosing ignore white will make any areas of your artwork that are white transparent. Once you've set all your options, 
To create the vector artwork, choose Expand in the Properties panel. You can also trace color rasterized artwork, maybe something you've created in Photoshop or Procreate, and you want to use it in Illustrator. For the mode, choose Color. And for the palette, you can choose Automatic, Limited, or Full Tone. I will usually choose limited because it gives you a limit of 30 colors, which for a fashion print is already a lot of colors. The more color you use, the more screens and inks are used and the more expensive your print becomes. Using a limited palette will help you control the amount of colors as well as help you reduce the number of colors if needed. Also, if you need to reduce your number of colors, you may want to reduce it to one or two more colors than you think it should be in case Illustrator is picking up small nuances or lighter tones of your artwork. All of the other options we adjusted with the black and white artwork will be the same here. And the other thing that's cool about tracing your art in color is that you can save the colors of the print into your swatches panel. Choose your artwork and in your swatches panel, click on the new color group folder icon. Once the new color group options box appears, you can name your color group. Make sure selected artwork is chosen because you're about to save the colors from your selected artwork and make sure both convert process to global and include swatches for tints are selected. Once you hit okay, all the colors that were in the print are now saved in your swatches, which makes it really easy to recolor your print. So now that you have changed it into vector artwork, you can recolor it and you can easily put it into repeat. And you can check out these videos on my YouTube channel to learn how to do that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.